against Pelstron here. And today, let's craft some bows. I'm making this video in anticipation for my Toxic Rain Ballista Leak Starter. However, this can also be used for any other Toxic Rain build. They're basically the same. Now, one of these bows is already included in my POB. If you see here, uh, Starter Guide, Early Game. And then mid game, you're going to see this bow right here. This is a plus three bow. However, this one is the budget plus three bow. The end game plus three bow we're going to have in the end game section. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but first up, we're going to start with the budget plus three. Uh, what does this one cost? First up, you'll have to get six porcupine cards right here. This will give you a six link short bow item level 50. Now, these can vary from 7 to up to 15 chaos a piece, or you can farm them yourself in these uh, maps right here, Courtyard, Gardens, Orchard. I'm not 100% sure if the wiki is already updated, but as of right now, those are the places where you could farm them yourself. I usually just buy them, but to each their own. Now, why is this so strong? Well, it's only level 50, but it doesn't matter for this particular craft because even on an item level 50, everything we want can roll. And the big thing about this over a quill run is not even just damage. It's just getting a six link. Now, while you can get a plus two lightning coil, that can be pretty expensive because you're most likely also going to need tainted or refusings, which is just annoying, right? Uh, so what you really want to do is probably get this plus free bow right here. Because uh, it's already going to um, give you the six link bow. And since we're ballista focused, uh, we don't really need a six link on the lightning coil. A five link will totally do. So that will alleviate a lot of costs. All right. So you got your six link short bow. What now? Okay. So now you have a white item with a six link. Pretty cool so far. But now what you have to do is you spam shrieking essences of dread. And it's important that it's shriekings because... Uh, Shriekings give plus two level of socketed bow gems. If you go one below screaming, you only get plus one, which is not worth crafting on. However, don't go higher as well because deafening does not change that role whatsoever. You're basically just wasting money. Go for shrieking. All right, and now we're going to spam them until we hit a decent attack speed roll, which for me, for example, is tier three or higher. And the item also has to have an open suffix and an open prefix. Why that is, I'll show you in step three. All right, so let's spam some dreads right here. See what happens. Plus two, no attack speed. Uh, once again, nothing. Here we got attack speed. This is a tier three mod. I should probably uh, put my cam a little bit on the side so you can see it. So we have the attack speed roll here. Now we need an open prefix and an open suffix. So what we're going to try now, we're going to try to null to remove either the cold damage or the physical damage right away. And we hit it. So we're basically already done. Now, the average for this craft is one out of 13. You're going to hit this. And then you also have to get the open prefix, open suffix. So if I had to guesstimate, it's probably like 16, 17 ish. Now next up, what we want to do is we want to use a certain craft. And that is cannot roll attack mods right here. So basically, this costs one divine. That is the one divine cost that I talked about. Um, now, what this means is that the only mod that is left in the prefixes that you can get once you exalt the slam is plus one to gem levels. This is not luck. This is deterministic, right? So if you're wondering first where you can get this craft, I'll link this down in the description, PUEDB. Uh, basically, this can change every patch, so you have to look for yourself. Right now, you get this craft from beating Care Blade, the unique map. Um, and yeah, the caster modifier is in this map right here. But right now, as of this recording, it is Care Blade. This sometimes changes though. So definitely check that if you want this craft. You can also ask one of your friends if they have them. Now, next up, what you do is simply slam, and there it is. Only thing to do is now remove this craft right here, and since we're now done, we're going to craft on the Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier, which is the best possible craft. Now, all that's left to do is basically, let's get me out of the way again, to um, craft on Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier. This is a Veiled mod that you can get from two-handers or one-handers. Craft until you get 20% and this bow is basically done. If you need the steps again, screenshot this right here. Step three, craft on the cannot roll attack modifiers. And then step four, use an exalted orb to get the plus one level of socketed gems. Now let's talk about the end, end game bow. Now the end game bow we're looking for is a plus three hunter thicket bow, right? We want the usual plus one level of socketed gems, plus two to level the level of socketed support gems, which increases Empower's level, which is basically the same as plus two bow level. We also have the tier one attack speed this time and um, crafted chaos damage over time. And we also have the hunter mod of increased chaos damage over time. This goes from around about 60 to around about 100. It's kind of RNG with what you hit. The first thing you need is a hunter thicket bow with eye level 78 or higher. We need level 78 to get 
that mod hire is not a problem. Now, these probably doesn't come with the six link. So whereas you didn't have to think about getting a six link on your short bow, on this thicket bow, you will have to. So you just have to buy it from trade. These are usually not that expensive. However, if they are too expensive, what you can do as well is you can go and just buy a normal thicket bow and um, slam it with a hunter's exalted orb to make it into a hunter bow, right? Now, usually that is more expensive. I'm just saying it's something to check. All right, so you got your thicket bow. It is hunter influenced. It's at least item level 78. What now? Well, first thing you have to do is you have to alt spam and annul and regal until you have only a tier one attack speed roll left. So no other mods and you want it to be rare. Now, how do you do that? Well, first up, you just spam all rough alterations until you get that attack speed like this. Obviously, this is going to take way too long, right? You do it over and over and over again. And at some point, what you're going to hit is um, this right here. So let's just say I hit the tier one attack speed. Let's say it took me 100 uh, over alterations, right? I got this, but uh, let's say that annoyingly, I also rolled this mod on top of it, right? Then you will have to annul. And if you annul it, then good. Otherwise, you have to keep rolling. Now, after you have this, though, you have to win one more step, which is you now regal. We want the bow to have the attack speed as your only mod, but it also has to be rare. So what you have to do is you have to regal, and now you have to win this 50-50 again with an orb of annulment. In this case, I got lucky, so it's kind of like another 50-51. And what you have now is a one stat rare bow. All right, so what you do next is you have two crafts here that you need to apply. And this is where the cost comes from. As I said at the start, this costs you five divines. Now, the first two divines come from crafting can have up to free crafted modifiers. This makes it so you can basically block a suffix. So whatever we're going to do after, it cannot hit a suffix because we want to hit prefixes. And with the second craft, we're going to take the cannot roll attack modifiers again. The same one we did earlier. So this one allows us to have up to two other crafts. Itself is a craft and then this one. And now we blocked all the suffixes from this item. And we also made it so that if we now use an exalted orb and add a mod, it cannot be an attack mod. And the only two mods we can now hit with the exalted orbs are exactly the mods that we want. First up, the plus one to a level of socketed gems, the same one as we did in the first craft. And secondly, we have the chaos damage over time mod that we so wanted. The chaos damage over time mod can roll, I think, from tier four to tier one. So that is going to be a little bit of RMG. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't, but the plus one is guaranteed. So first roll, we get the plus one, and now we're going to see if we're lucky or not. In this case, we hit the tier four, so that's unfortunate, but we still made a substantially better bow. So far, we spent whatever we needed in terms of annulments or of alterations and whatnot, and we spent three divines here. The last cost comes from you first have to remove these crafts again, right? So both crafts have to be removed because when you remove, they both get removed, right? And you have to reapply. This can have up to free crafted modifiers. And then what you do is you craft on two mods that you desire. As our last suffix mod, we want to craft on chaos damage over time multiplier right here. And as our last prefix, we want another craft. And that craft is going to be plus two to level of socketed support gems right here. And... Voila. If you wanted something better than tier 4 chaos damage over time, then sure, you can recraft if you want to. It is very expensive, though, for very minimal gain. But in general, this is going to be your endgame weapon. And once again, here it is step by step in case you want to screenshot it. Now, in general, these bows will enhance your build quite a bit. Pro Rain does feel a lot better, which means that you will probably miss the attack speed a little bit. You will miss the proc speed a little bit. So if you're just mapping, you can still stick with Pro Rain. That completely depends on you. Try it out yourself, uh, but in general, these will give you a ton of endgame damage. So that's just something to keep in mind, right? Uh, you will definitely feel a difference right there, but at some point you might really need that damage. Uh, also, don't forget that you can actually corrupt Quirin for 3-5% to attack speed, um, which can be helpful as well. It's just a little bit of tiny extra damage. Uh, now, you can reconsider keeping Quirin if you really love the playstyle, if you do easier content, right? And uh, you maybe have a lightning coil with one of these, right? So usually we would socket uh, our main setup into our bow because it has plus two bow levels. However, if you want to keep Quirin, in, that will have to be in the chest armor. So you're going to socket it into a lightning coil. And if you have a lightning coil with, for example, plus two gem levels, that can be legit. It's still going to do less damage with Quirin, but you get all the upsides of Quirin. So what you would want on your lightning coil is plus one to level socketed gems. This also counts for Empower, which is basically like these others. It basically is plus two. Um, 
Projectile gems, AoE gems, duration gems all work because toxic rain is all of these things. And if you should be one of these crazy people who gets two of these as a double corruption, whether it is from a Val Temple or whether it is from a double corruption that you try for yourself, that you basically won the game and you can do whatever you want. But yeah, that's just something I wanted to point out. Whether you're playing this build, whether you're playing a different Toxic Rain iteration, they're basically all the same, just with a tiny bit of different items and different playstyle. And maybe you learned a thing or two. And um, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.